photographers did the Nikon D780, a full-frame DSLR with interchangeable lenses, an optical viewfinder, and a touch-enabled tilting LCD get your attention? Uh, it's an upgrade to the D750, a very popular model, which is now five years old. And it's Nikon's first DSLR release since their launch of the mirrorless Z series cameras. The competition in the interchangeable full-frame space is fierce. And much of that competition comes from mirrorless cameras. Well, let's have a look at what the D780 has to offer and why it might or might not be your next camera. The sensor is the same or very similar to the 24 megapixel one used in the Z6. Focus capabilities have changed dramatically in the last five years. And that's where I found the greatest improvement over the D750. Now, while some of these are applied to viewfinder shooting, the most dramatic improvements come in live view. That said, I was surprised to find face and eye detect available in the viewfinder. The D780 inherits features like focus shift and the negative digitizer from the D850 and improvements in live view and video modes from its mirrorless cousins. And if video was an afterthought in the D750, it's now a full partner with very competitive specs, including log functions and 10 bit output. Smartphone connectivity supports SnapBridge and includes Bluetooth to maintain a constant connection for time and location. And it switches to Wi-Fi to transfer images, including raw files and video. And if I tread lightly on SmartBridge in this video, it's because I devoted an entire video to this subject. This is the classic DSLR design, but there's no onboard flash. Nikon says that's to improve weather sealing. The scene mode also failed to survive the upgrade. Nikon provided the FX F-mount 24-70 to f2.8 lens for use in this review. It was a pleasure to use. The focal length adjustment is hidden by the lens hood. The body weighs 840 grams, and this lens nearly doubles that, totaling over 1.7 kilo. I want to review the focus settings first, so I'm starting in aperture priority with auto ISO. A dedicated AF-ON key has been added. You'll no longer have to repurpose the AEL AFL key. And it doesn't work in manual mode to use it for back button focus. Use an AF mode and use custom setting A8 to disable the shutter focus interlock. The 2470 focuses to 0.38 meters and has a switch to force manual focus. A window displays the focus distance and there's a detent when the closest and furthest distance is reached. This makes it possible to set and return to a specific focal distance. Filter diameter is 77 millimeters. Your left thumb should find the AF mode button easily. Press and turn the rear dial to select a mode and then the front to set an area. In viewfinder mode, the bounding box shows the focus area. The alternate way to select is with the LCD screen, press and the menu selects the mode options and the area selections. In single mode, there are three area choices. Auto, which selects the closest focusable objects. Group, a smaller area, release the AF button and use the control dial to move it around the screen. And single, which can also be moved. Press the shutter to focus. The white dot in the bottom left is the confirmation and snap. Focus is fast, and all of the viewfinder focus points use phase detection. There are more area selections in continuous, where focus will stay with the moving object as long as it's within the focus area. Again, auto for the entire focus area, group a movable zone, 3D, which tracks objects, as well as 51, 21, 9, and single point. I'll return to tracking when we look at the burst modes. A completely different focus system is used in live view, but the controls stay pretty much the same. Since you're not using the viewfinder, the eye menu is the easier choice. And live view enables touch and snap. Use the on-screen button to switch to touch only or to disable. 
I just want to mention that this is one of the most capable touch cameras I've used. Nearly everything is touch enabled, from activating, navigating, and selecting with the eye menu, to changing the exposure settings, to navigating and selecting in the main menu, it's all a very responsive touch and go system. Of course, the standard navigation and selection controls remain available, which is useful when it's cold and I'm wearing gloves. Same three autofocus modes in live view, although in video, auto auto is replaced by full time auto. The areas range from auto, which covers the area inside the red corners and shows green rectangles over the focus points. Now, let me note here that with this lens, the focus motors are more audible than most. Wide large, a movable rectangle. Wide small, a movable square. Single point, a smaller movable square. And pinpoint, a tiny movable square. With single point, you can see the size of the coverage area. It comes closer to the edges of the scene than most. And in single, the area turns green when it's in focus. When your focus point is in the center, focus is fast, but the hybrid phase contrast system is a little slower at the edges. And if that seems like a lot of points to navigate, of course there's touch, but also A6, which uses only half the points and moves around more quickly. In continuous, auto, wide, large, and small, along with single point remain, dynamic area is an alternate to single, useful when the object moves slightly outside the focus area. The D780 is capable in low light, although auto settings make the scene look much brighter than it is. Focus is a little slower than average. Custom setting A11 enables low light AF, which the manual says is more accurate in low light. I just found it to be faster. Face detection is available in auto area and managed with the A5 custom setting, where the settings screen clearly states that this is only available in live view. By default, face and eye are enabled. You can limit it to face detection or turn it off. In single, from defocus, it may take two presses to find the subject and then the eye. Switch eyes with the cursor control. Then, custom setting A4 enables face detection in the viewfinder 3D mode. Although it does feel slightly less capable than the live view version, this was an unexpected find. Use either the switch on the body or on the lens to switch to manual focus. In the viewfinder, the arrows around the focus confirmation dot will help find focus under the focus square. The same assist is available in live view, where you can also use the zoom button for an expanded view, or use custom setting D11 to activate peaking with three levels and four colors. Now the outlines of objects in focus will appear. Uh, my summary here is that there are substantial upgrades to focus which would certainly make a strong case to upgrade from the D750. And there are a few more focus capabilities like focus shift and features like low light autofocus. Now, let's go back and have a more detailed look at the body. A big body means a big and roomy grip with no possibility for your knuckles to chafe on the lens. And it means a mini, not micro HDMI port and USB-C. It means mic in and headphone connections. And it means a control panel on top, which displays settings while the camera is on and card, but not battery status, when off. And it means more keys, buttons, <laughs> dials, and controls than average, cutting down on trips to the menu to adjust settings, change features, or access capabilities. There's the on off switch with the shutter button a mode dial with a lock button on top, and a drive collar with a lock beside. Dials in front and in back, and to set the viewfinder diopter. There's a focus switch with a button to enable mode selection. Live view button with the still video selector. A navigation pad with OK key and focus lock switch. Then at least 18 keys, and many are dual function, many can be customized. Menu help and white balance, zoom and quality, zoom out and meter, info to change display modes, I to open the quick overlay settings menu, exposure and focus lock, focus, 
play, delete, video record, ISO, which when pressed with delete opens format, exposure compensation, which when pressed with zoom out resets the camera to its default settings, flash compensation, bracket, lens release, preview, and an assignable function button. Then there are indicators for charging, for memory card access, and for the self-timer. While the Z series has adopted the newer, faster, and more robust XQD card format, dual SD card slots here. For stills, you can set the second card as a backup to save RAW on one JPEG on the other, or as overflow when the first card fills up. For video, you can select the card to record to, but there's no backup option. And if you fill up one card, it just stops. You'll have to switch cards manually. Although you've paid for quality, to get it, you'll have to upset image quality from normal to fine star and include RAW if you prefer. Manual exposure is the most complex, so let's start there to review the operational details. Press the meter button and select the right meter mode for the scene. In the viewfinder, the icons are a little cryptic. In live view, they're labeled matrix, center weighted, spot, and highlight, which will expose down from the brightest object to avoid blowouts. You can also see the current setting in the control panel. Auto ISO works even in manual. Turn it off by pressing the ISO key and turning the front dial. The front dial sets the aperture, the rear the shutter speed, press the ISO button and turn the rear dial to set the ISO. Use F5 to customize if you want the rotation reversed or to switch the dials. A shutter goes from 1 over 8000 faster than average to 30 seconds. In manual, bulb mode holds the shutter open while the button is pressed. Time opens the shutter with the first press, closes it with the second. ISO sets from 100 to 51,200. Extended modes, high from 0.3 to 2 and low from 0.3 to 1 stop. I found ISO 6400 to be clean and usable. A little noise starts to appear at 12,800. It's more noticeable at 25,6. Detail starts to soften at 51,2. And as we get to the extended settings, both noise and grain increase to levels that might be useful only under duress. To configure the auto ISO, now that you know your tolerance, the maximum can be set up to high 2. A flash max can be set and a minimum shutter speed. All the way down to 30 seconds can be selected. In the viewfinder, the exposure meter display appears at the bottom of the screen. It also appears on the control panel and on the information display screen. In live view, custom setting D9 turns it on to display on the right hand side. And then we can start to automate by turning auto ISO back on. The meter changes to display the exposure compensation. Uh, press the EV button and both dials change the setting for a 5 up and 5 down range. Switch to aperture priority to let the camera take control of the shutter speed or shutter priority to let the camera control the aperture. Although the EV display disappears, it will reappear when you press the key. Or program mode where the camera manages all the exposure settings. You can turn the back dial to either select a faster shutter or a smaller aperture within the suitable exposure range, but this is dependent on the lighting conditions. An asterisk appears beside the program mode indicator. All of those controls are easily accessed without moving your eye from the viewfinder. Press and hold the WB key to open the white balance panel. The rear dial selects a preset, these are the usual suspects, Turn the front dial to set Kelvin from 2500 to 10,000 in arbitrary increments. You can also capture and save a preset, and each setting can be adjusted using the two color axes. And these are, of course, applied to the JPEG files and not RAW. Press the I key to open a settings panel. White balance can also be adjusted here. Then further color preferences for JPEG can be selected using picture control. These start with a few presets, but more controls are available for each to fine tune to create your own color science setting. 
the panel is not interactive in viewfinder mode, switch to live view and the panel is an overlay where you can see the effect of the changes you're making on the image. Continue to the numbered settings for more extreme filters with abstract names. Of course, if you are shooting with RAW plus JPEG, you'll have both the affected JPEG image and a clean RAW file. Now, for even more extreme filters, turn the mode dial to Effect. Again, these are the usual suspects. However, selecting RAW is not enough. Use D8 to save an unaffected RAW file for these. And although these settings can be used for video, some of these effects record at a lower frame rate. Fun, though. By default, the shutter sounds like this. Turn on silent live view photography to take fully silent images using the electronic shutter, and that sounds like this. The drive dial offers Q, quiet, which holds the mirror return until the shutter's released, that sounds like this. And then when I release the shutter button, and quiet continuous, which sounds like this. The other interesting option is mirror up. Press to set the focus and exposure and raise the mirror, closing the viewfinder. This can minimize mirror shock. Then press again to take the image and release the mirror. Mirror shock can also be reduced using D4, exposure delay, which programs time between the mirror up and shutter release. D5 enables a front electronic shutter in quick and mirror up modes to further reduce vibration. The fastest shutter speed in this mode is 1 over 2000, the highest ISO is 51200. Nikon says that the shutter has been tested for 150,000 cycles. I wonder what the results of the tests were. Select burst modes from the drive caller, CL is low. And in the menu, low can be set from 1 to 6 frames per second. CH is high. In viewfinder mode, shooting JPEG Fine Star to a newly formatted V90 type card in slot 1 with full manual settings yielded 7 frames per second and lasted for 14 seconds when it comes to a dead stop after 100 images. Results are identical in live view, 7 images per second last for 14 seconds and again comes to a complete stop after taking 100 images. And one more time I'll do my little whine on the arbitrary 100 image limit. For those of us who are careful and won't trigger shooting accidentally, could we please set it to 1000 or some such? Custom setting A3 controls tracking. Quick switches to an object entering the scene. Delayed stays with the original subject longer before changing. G4 provides equivalent settings for video. In Live View, press OK to activate and move the target over the object to track. Soft press to start tracking and the D780 stays with the train as it gets to the lens's closest focus point. Then when I start shooting the focus doesn't update as frequently but the images are sharp as the focus tracks with the train as it travels. Viewfinder mode is slightly less capable as the focus area is smaller and tracking, particularly while shooting, seems less reliable. You'll find a timer mode on the drive caller. It's controlled by C3, where you can set a delay from 2 to 20 seconds, shots from 1 to 9, and an intershot delay up to 3 seconds. This is the best of any camera. Bracket is set on the main menu, exposure, flash or exposure and flash, white balance and auto dynamic range. Select the number of shots and the difference between from 0.3 to 3 with a handy line graph, although at 2 and 3 stops only 5 shots are possible. And there are also up and down only settings. Return to zero to turn this feature off. An onboard interval timer also has an impressive control set. Intervals from 1 half second to 24 hours, 10,000 minus 1 intervals up to 9 shots per interval, and several options include turning the images into a movie at frame rates up to 4K30 and to save the images in their own folder. Use the menu to start shooting.
For time-lapse movie only, a slightly simpler menu. Choose the interval and the length of time to shoot, select the frame rate, and start. Focus Shift takes a series of images with a small focus change after each. It takes a little trial and error to determine the right number of images and the step width, which varies according to the lens. And for this scene, I set 20 images and the maximum step width. Press Start and then review your images. Now you can either pick the image with the focus you want or combine the entire stack into an image where everything's in focus using photo editing software like Photoshop. There's an interesting option in Live View, a negative digitizer. Nikon sells an optional slide tray used so that you can transfer your 35mm film negatives. I demonstrated this in the video linked on screen and in the description. To shoot video, switch to Live View and turn to the video position. Now you can't shoot video while using the viewfinder, but luckily there's a fairly simple solution. I use an LCD viewfinder, link in the description. Uh, I'm not sure why the exposure meter disappears. To judge exposure in video, press info and use the histogram. Video frame rates up to 120 in HD, up to 30 in 4K, only the 16x9 video resolution, not 17x9 cinema. In 50 and 60 frame HD, two quality settings, normal at 28 megabits, high is 56. At 24, 25 and 30, data rates are halved. The 4K data rate is nominally 144 megabits. Most of the recordings I made clocked at lower rates. There are two movie types, MOV and MP4. Both use the same H.264 video codec. MOV records audio as linear PCM, MP4 uses AAC. Recording time is limited to 30 minutes. There are three slow motion modes. They're limited to three minutes of record time. Still images can be taken while recording video. A nice feature to have, but you'll be using a non-optimal shutter speed either for video or for the stills. And these files are saved at the video resolution so when you're shooting 4K video, there are 8 megapixel 16x9 images. In video mode, using full-time autofocus with auto area and face detect on, the D780 finds my face and maintains a good grip on me without micro adjustments, either in the foreground or the background. And this makes the D780 very competitive with the Z series models and a few other recent mirrorless competitors. Uh, with the lights off, and now illuminated by a single candle, Face Detect continues to work. That's impressive. I've turned the Kelvin down to the minimum, 2500, and the candle is likely slightly less than that. Aperture f4 and shutter 1 over 60. I've turned the ISO up to 25600, and even though the image is slightly soft, it's very usable as a candle-lit scene. Nikon provides a comprehensive set of playback options. Activate the info options to see more details about the photo. Now there's also an option to display the image on the LCD after it's taken. That works in both viewfinder and live view modes, but it's fairly slow. There's a second menu tab, retouch, to work with the images in camera. Nikon provides a really extensive menu with some expected, like trim, but also unique features like distortion and perspective adjustments, and the ability to superimpose images with controls to set the relative level of each. There's also a full set of controls for converting RAW files to JPEG, which includes the picture control color profiles, but sadly, not the effects. The new EL15B battery is rated for over 2,000 images in viewfinder mode. No rating is given for live view. Nikon estimates about 95 minutes for video recording. A battery charger is included. Nikon does not make an accessory battery grip for this model. The downloadable PDF reference manual runs over 900 pages for this model and provides more insight about features as well as details about exclusions and limitations than usual. It is worth your time if you want to fully understand the D780. And I know that you will ask. The D780 is made in Thailand to what I assume are Nikon's always high quality standards. 
Now, it is interesting to see that many of the features that distinguish the mirrorless Z series are now enabled in a DSLR style body, but they're primarily available in live view. And while compatibility with F mount lenses is valuable, and this is certainly a rugged and durable camera, its size and weight could be a burden when compared to the Z6. And although the Z6's viewfinder is electronic, it can be used in all modes. Live view on the D780 limits you to the LCD, but that's why I have the LCD viewfinder adapter. All right, always remember to keep shooting until your memory card's full and your battery is empty. And if you have questions or comments, I enjoy interacting with you. So post your relevant questions and civil comments below. I would like to thank all of my subscribers. Your interest and support is appreciated. And if you're thinking about subscribing, remember that it's free and there is no obligation.